This next task is without a doubt one of my favorite things in parachute rigging. You get a great result for not too much effort and it's something that is pretty intimidating until you know how to do it. We're going to change a line, or actually we're going to change two, we're going to change an A line and a B line and we're going to do it without taking any measurements and the only thing we're going to need is a pair of scissors, a fid, a pen and a couple of pins. I'm going to start out by cutting the line that I'm going to pretend is broken. And in this case, I'm going to cut the A and the B line. Now the rest of the lines on this canopy have been removed just for clarity in the video. The only thing I've left is its opposite number, which is a center A line, as this was also the center A and B line. I've still left the slider on, just so that you can see how to thread the line through it, although that's not really going to blow your mind. And at this end, which you can't quite see in the video, the lines are left on number five connector links just so that you can see that you don't even need to undo the links. I'm going to unravel the line, which should be the same as whatever the line was for original manufacturer, in this case Dacron, and I'm going to unravel a good distance of it and we'll just fine tune that later on. What I'll do then is pass that line through whichever grommet the broken line was supposed to pass through. In this case, this grommet. And I'll pass it through going towards the connector link. The next thing I'm going to do is trap this onto the link. So let's take the end of the Dacron line that we've unfurled and trim it so that the line is at, at least a 45 degree angle. You never want to hot cut this as it leaves a plasticized edge that could act like a dull knife and cut the line. What I'm going to do now is go to the good line, my reference line, and I'm going to place the end of my new line up against the trap in point. And I'm going to feel for where the trapped in portion of line ends. And then I'll put a mark there. So now I know how much line has to trap in. I'll now take my new line and place it on the link that used to have the damaged line on it. I'll now replicate the loop and just put another mark just so that I know where to trap into. I'll now take my fid, insert it into the core of the line and bring it out at the mark. You actually don't have to be that accurate in this case. The only thing I would recommend you pay attention to is make sure that the loop is big enough that you can remove it off the connector link if you need to so that it'll go over the threads. So I'll just work that line in and apologies for making a bit of a mess from my gloves but uh, we get some pretty dry atmosphere out here so I need to baby them. There we go so I've lined up my match marks now I'm just going to take a push pin wrong a pin and put it in there just so that I don't pull the trap out. What I'll do next is I'll remove my damaged lines from the canopy. I'll take my new line, which I've already walked back to make sure it's not twisted or tangled, and you can do a better job of that, but I don't want to keep uh, belaboring the video. And I'll now compare my new line to my reference line and I want to be about 18 inches longer than it and then I can cut my A line, my new A line. The next thing I do is I thread this through the line attachment point replicating the knot. Then I'll cinch up my new line so it's within about an inch of my reference line's length. There we go. 
Let's figure out where to trap our cascade in at this point. So I've got my reference line here and you can see the cascade going into it. This is my new line. I'm going to put them under about equal tension and I'll just stretch this line out now um, at about 30 pounds for about 30 seconds. I'm just going to abbreviate that for the sake of the video. I'll now take a pen and I'll pay attention to where the cascade line trapped in originally and I'll place a mark on my new line about three-eighths of an inch towards the canopy above the trap end point and I'll explain why in just a moment. So now I'll take my new cascade line oh, should have done one more thing measure the length of the cascade line that's going to trap in there by comparison so there it is, that's how much cascade line traps into the A line. Until we line up with our match mark. Take the slack out and again we'll place a pin in there just to hold the trap. I'll do a quick comparison for now and you'll notice they're now about the same length. The reason being when you insert a line into another one it causes it to uh, expand on this dimension which consequently causes it to shrink on its length dimension. Now let's bring our new line, compare it to our reference line and cut it again about mm, 18 inches too long. I'll now thread my cascade line into the line attachment point, again replicating the direction of the original knot. Now it doesn't really matter to tell you the truth whether or not it goes in the right direction, but it takes exactly the same amount of effort to do it that way as to do it the other way, and it gives a much better visual appearance. I'll now compare this to my reference line and get it to within about three-eighths of an inch. And now I'm just going to pull on this 30 pounds for 30 seconds just to take any um, slack out of the line. So right now I'm still about mm, half an inch too long so I'm going to take just a little, little bit more out of my new line. So now I'm just coming up on three-eighths. Maybe I guesstimated wrong there. Yeah, about three-eighths. Now the reason, same as before, that we want it to be slightly longer on our new line is that when we trap into this, it's going to shrink. So I'll now take my pen, I'll mark the trap end point by comparison, and the length of the trapped end portion of line. There we go. I'll now trim my new line at a 45 degree angle. Take my fit and trap it in. I'll do a quick comparison. Pretty good. The plus or minus is typically about a half inch to an inch depending on which manufacturer and what they say. In reality we can get a lot better than that. I'd say right now I'm about, about an eighth of an inch too short on my new line. So I'm just going to let it out a little bit. Beautiful. Bang on the money. I'll now finish up adjusting the length of my A line. And the reason I do this last is I don't have to now um, estimate how much shrinkage the cascade causes because it's now caused that shrinkage. Perfect. Same technique as we just did. Mark the trap in point. Mark the length 
of line to be trapped in. And we'll just compare those lines. Again, a little too short, so I'll just feed a little back. Still a little short. Bang on the money. All that remains for us to do now is to bar tack the four different trap in points and then to just double check our work. I'm going to be using a bar tacker for some of these and then I'm going to go to a zigzag. It's most likely that you're not going to have access to a bar tacker in the field, but a zigzag is a perfectly good um, replacement for that. And you're going to want to place the bar tack as close as you can to the insertion point of the trap. This is the bit where I'm going to get myself in trouble, but you don't actually have to back stitch on the zigzag if you don't want. I've tried this a lot of times myself. I would recommend, however, doing about a two inch zigzag all the way up, in this case, to the link version. Same thing for the cascade. Start at about the trap end point, thereabouts. Uh, sorry, the end of the trapped in portion of line. Check our work, compare our line lengths, make sure that our bar tacks are present and that the lines are running through the correct slider grommet. Make sure the bar tacks are correct down there. Now you can remove the damaged line. So there it is, replaced a line without using a ruler and got within about a half inch of its opposite number reference line. I hope you'll forgive me for wearing dirty gloves, that wasn't such a great idea, but hey, the idea of uh, how to do the line hopefully worked for you. See ya!